My name is Tom Glacken. I'm Vice President of Sales with Bologic. And uh, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to give a very brief background about Bologic, but uh, and then spend a little bit of time talking about why inventory planning is important. Why should you perhaps consider investing in a planning solution today, especially in these tough economic times? I'll also touch a little bit about Bologic's approach to planning, and then I have a software demonstration. I'll conclude my session with uh, a, a, value, a case study from uh, one of our customers, and then we'll open it up to questions and answers. Very briefly about Bologics, our, our founders have been specializing in advanced inventory planning and optimization since 1988. That is all we do. So we have a laser sharp focus on providing powerful planning solutions that are easy to use. And we always balance that ease of use with the functionality because the, if a solution is not easy to use, we find that the people have a tendency not to use them. Um, we have been a strategic partner with Sage uh, since uh, 2003, so we have a very long relationship with the Sage. We understand the uh, solution very well. We are a global organization. We have customers and partners in 41 countries and continuing to grow. But there's been one thing that's been consistent with our solutions over the years, and that's the ability to help organizations gain a unique competitive advantage and receive a powerful return on their investment from, uh, in, from the software solution. Um, and what we do at the end of the day is we help organizations improve their cash flow. And I know that's a, a bold statement. You may hear that frequently from software solution providers. But hopefully by the end of today's brief session, you'll have a sense of how Vologics may enable you to save a tremendous amount of time when it comes to uh, planning your inventory, but perhaps more importantly, help you optimize your investment in your inventory and reduce the amount of money you have in your inventory while enabling you to increase sales by having a better mix of the appropriate items available. So why consider investing today? You know, the economy is still not, not uh, doing extremely well. You know, there are some indicators that are positive, but on the other hand, you know, customers are more demanding than ever. They, through these uh, economic crises starting in 2008, we're finding that you know, they've, they've learned to shop, they've learned to uh, get the best deal, so they're more demanding than ever uh, from a cost perspective, but they're also one instant fulfillment. So if you don't have an, an item and you have competitors, it's very likely you may lose a sale. Um, you know, if you look at some other things that are occurring, en energy costs are still unstable, so it's really kind of hard to tell, you know, should you try to hedge your bets going up and down with inventory. Um, Looking at some uh, studies we looked at recently, one of them in particular I found uh, very interesting from Kiplinger that we just done uh, early this month. Um, you know, the stubbornly tepid economy will persist for the rest of this year and next. So it's it's not going away anytime soon. Banks are still uh, reluctant to lend, and actually over the last a couple months they've been pulling back even farther. Um, business managers uh, have grown cautious about the economy. You could say that they've been that way for years, but it's these are all things from uh, the recent uh, Kiplinger uh, study. And then, if you look at the um, the Small Business Optimism Index, you know, there was a slight bump in August, but there's few positive signs for the future. So, the economic indicators are mixed. And so, having said that, what if you could un what if you could uncover t untapped line of credit for internal funding? What if you could identify where your inventory is at risk of being surplus or being obsolete and act on it today while it has more value than it will tomorrow? What if you could increase sales through better inventory availability or work more efficiently and smarter in that process? Or what if you could benefit from a return on investment measured in weeks and not years? And perhaps most importantly, be ready for the changes in customer demand, whether they're going to go up or down. So in these uncertain times, you know, it's really difficult for organizations that are carrying inventory. Should you hedge your bet and um, you know stock up on inventory, or do you really need to be uh, cautious and perhaps you know be tapering off your inventory? It's crucial to have the appropriate information at your fingertips so you can make those informed decisions. And that is essentially what Vologix does. We help organizations manage a very tough balancing act by helping to keep inventory costs as low as possible while enabling users to meet their customers' demands at a desired service level. <clears throat> if we look at some of the challenges, common challenges we encounter with businesses around the world, and that's 
lack of ability or the ability to recognize and react to the variability in demand. If, you're, if you take that and then apply additional continual growth of new SKUs, and then having those items that many organizations are importing from overseas, so they have long lead times. <clears throat> All of those things combined together create a perfect storm that makes it incredibly challenging to manage inventory and plan for inventory properly. And if, you're, if your tool you have is a, 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 a spreadsheet uh, and you're manually setting and maintaining min-max stocking values, those things can very easily get out of sync, resulting in stockouts for certain items, and at the other extreme, excess and inactive inventory. So all of these things come together to, um, these are common challenges that we face, and Vologix helps to address those challenges. We can't replace the, the knowledge, the unique knowledge that you have about your business, but what the solution does do is provide you with very powerful information as a starting point to let you focus on managing exceptions, uh, enabling you to react to changes in the market, um, enabling you to plan much quicker. Um, and the application begins by automatically analyzing historical demand so it can create a forecast for each item at each location. And while that forecast is important, the real power of the solution comes in the next step, and that's the optimization stage. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that on the next two slides. You'll see when I get into the software, we have spent a lot of time and effort, and we have a strong focus on making it easy to use and enabling users to focus on managing exceptions. Uh, if you have multiple warehouses or locations that you're stocking, the application has, provides multi-echelon planning, meaning you can plan to bring items into a distribution center and support branch locations or perhaps third-party logistics location. Or many of our customers actually have the requirement to keep inventory out at their customer location. So they're doing consignment inventory or, or vendor managed inventory. The application can help you plan down to the customer level if desired. Now, <clears throat> while forecasting is a great start, the real power and the real benefit of this solution comes in the ability to automatically set optimum stocking quantities. Or in other words, take that forecast and turn it into a meaningful number that will enable you to have the appropriate amount of stock needed uh, on your shelf when needed. On this chart, we have two very distinctly different historical demand patterns. The item on the left has very random demand. Some months very high, other months very low. One of the challenges with an item like this is, again, a forecast is a great starting point. And here, there's enough data to statistically create this forecast and determine that the, an upward trend is occurring. But the problem with the forecast alone is that it won't necessarily ensure you can meet the next unexpected peak in demand. So what Vologix does, we begin by considering an item's lead time. In this example, it's 15 days for ease of illustration. If you're importing from overseas, that could easily be 90 days, 120 days, or even longer, depending on your product. The, the process works the same. We also enable you to determine how frequently you would ideally like to place replenishment orders. And in this case, it's twice a month or every 15 days. So the combination of the lead time and the order frequency create the planning horizon. The planning application continually looks it out at the forecast over the planning horizon, as well as a couple of other variables, but the forecast is one of the most important. You have the ability to set a target service level. So, or in other words, statistically speaking, what confidence level do you want to have of being able to meet the upcoming demand with inventory that's sitting on your shelf? And it's a very critical item, so it's been set relatively high here, 99%. Using all that information, the software will automatically calculate an ideal stocking quantity. In this example, the stocking quantity has been set at 158. That includes 110 to cover the forecast, plus an additional 48 in safety stock because there's so much variability here. Um, <clears throat> if we look at the second item, uh, much more predictable, much more steady demand resulting in the same forecast, if we look at the planning parameters and use all of the exact same planning parameters, the net result here is a stocking quantity of 119 instead of the 158 that was on the first item. And the reason this is so much lower is that much less safety stocks required to achieve the same service level. So when I talk about optimization, this is really at the heart of what the software is doing. And it is recalculating this stocking quantity for every item 
at every location every day so it's always staying in sync with your business requirements and changing uh, business demands. And part of what enables us to do that is we are doing powerful statistics uh, behind the scenes. Um, and the beauty of it is, though, you do not have to be a mathematician or statistician to be able to use it. The application's doing all of the heavy lifting. All you really have to uh, um, really understand is that the higher you set the target service level, the higher or the greater amount of stock it's going to suggest to be able to enable you to achieve that. And you'll see when I get into software, we actually, this exchange curve, you can actually run what is scenarios. You can drag and run along this line to see how that stocking quantity changes. One final slide before getting into the software itself is just to show our, in, our integration with the SAGE database. This data synchronization is set up to occur automatically and keep the Vologix database up to date. So you'll continue to maintain the data in MAP and Vologix automatically pulls that in. So there's no du duplicate data entry. Vologix begins the planning process by analyzing up to 48 months of historical demand, looking for patterns so it can select the best fit forecasting technique. One of the first tests is to check for seasonal. If it has a seasonal pattern to it, it'll select a seasonal algorithm. If not, it looks to see if it's high moving, slow moving, or random, and based off that, picks the best fit forecasting technique and creates a forecast up to 36 months in advance. Once the forecast has been established, it then goes through that optimization process that I talked about on the two previous slides to set the stocking quantity. Once the stocking quantity has been established, it then provides some strategic visibility to show where you might have excess and inactive stock. And it also analyzes the inventory that's sitting in your warehouses and provides some visibility as to how long that is anticipated to last. And then any items that are short, it will suggest the appropriate replenishments. And that can be in the form of purchase orders back to the suppliers for those items you buy, for stock transfer requests if you have uh, um, a distribution center that's supporting other branch locations or perhaps retail stores, as well as a production or work orders. And it automatically suggests those, presents them for easy review, editing, and approval. And then once approved, it seamlessly creates the appropriate documents within the SAGE database. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the software and provide a brief uh, demonstration. And uh, let me just go ahead and log out here. Um, with Vologix, uh, the application is browser-based. So all you need is a browser to be able to access the, uh, the data. And I'll go ahead and um, enter my credentials and log in. And actually, let me expand this, uh, this one so it uh, displays OK for everyone. Um, right on the home page, right on the Vologix home page, we present you with some very important alerts. And here, this, this is inventory shortages. These are items that have the potential to stock out within the item's lead time. And we can see here there's 39 light items, 39 light items that have the potential to stock out within the lead time. There's also two items, two line items, that have the potential, or actually a customer order is driving a shortage. If you want to see details behind that, you simply click on the pie chart. It takes you into the replenishment plan, critical alerts, and I can immediately see those two line that those two items that have customer orders associated with them, um, so I can get some additional insight. So let's take a look and focus on this sample item here. And if I look here at the required quantity, this is actually very interesting. Well, Logix is suggesting that, the, or, or is not recommending that any replenishments are required. So what is causing the issue here? So if I click here on a required quantity, it brings up an inventory flow. And the inventory flow provides a very powerful time phased view of the beginning balance as well as any um, forecast impact on that as well as any open supply or demand documents. So we can see what's causing the issue here. We're starting with 30. And then here's a sales order for a quantity of 6, the sales order 249, for a quantity of 6 is reducing the uh, ending balance. This sales order is the one that's causing the issue, number 247. It was due on, it's due um, on September 29th. So it's, it's not overdue yet. It's due on September 29th for a quantity of 35. Um, we only have 24 available, so that's resulting in the shortage. That's why this item is getting this alert. If we look at this, we can actually see there's a purchase order due in the following day um, 
for a quantity of 35. So that's going to more than meet the, the, uh, the demand. So from this one screen, after being in the application for just a few seconds, you can very quickly get insight into potential uh, sales order or an order that has potential issues being uh, uh, fulfilled and additional information that would enable you to perhaps uh, a couple things could happen here. You could call the customer and let them know that you won't be able to fully fulfill the order until the next day. Do they want to take uh, you know, a, a short um, ship uh, early or do they want to wait until the next day? Or perhaps you could contact the supplier for this. Here, the, here's the supplier ID. Uh, contact the supplier to see if there's any way to move that purchase order in a day earlier. So again, you can get the very powerful information very quickly um, so that you can focus and manage your business. I'm going to come back to this screen, but what I'd like to do now is move to a, a very detailed view of the item so that I can talk about the planning process. So if I click here on the item, and I, I want to go ahead and look at the, uh, the general warehouse. You're, we're, we're at the inventory data, item details. Here we have uh, information that's been imported from Sage. So again, you, you do the maintenance in Sage, and this automatically um, updates. Let me scroll down to the bottom of this screen. At the bottom of the item, item detail screen, you can see up to 48 months of historical demand. Uh, quantity sold by month, um, and you can see it either numerically or graphically. And one of the reasons I selected this particular item is that it's obviously very seasonal in nature. There's two busy periods during the year, March, April, May, and then again in September and October. The application automatically detected that seasonal pattern, selected a seasonal forecasting algorithm, and automatically creates this forecast that you see down here. And again, you can display up to 36 months of forecast. And the forecast picks up not only the seasonal pattern, but it also picks up recent trends. And if you look at the uh, total sales for 2010, 6,700, it was down in 2011. That trend is, a, is continuing. And that's built into the forecast automatically. So it's picking up both seasonal patterns as well as recent trends and building that in automatically. Now you have full control over the forecast. If you know a special promotion or something that unique is occurring, you can edit the forecast if you uh, desire to do so. You also have full control over the history. Let's say a, a customer came in and made a large one-time buy or unusual event occurred. Well, you can edit the history and normalize it. You can take out that unusual demand so it's not impacting the plan moving forward. Um, once the forecast has been set, though, once you have the forecast set, then the application looks at the forecast over the planning horizon. Here it's just over 1,200. It then looks to see the target service level. This has been set very high, 99.9%. .9%. And using that information, it automatically calculates this stocking quantity. So this is the number that's recalculated by the application for every item, every location, every day. And that is the target. That's what we should have either on hand or on order to safely meet the upcoming demand. Here you can see we have 873 on hand. There's 825 on order. Um, you can actually get a little bit of additional information here about, you know, on order. Here I can see 495 of them are past due. So, um, you know, I might want to go take a look and see why that supplier is not delivering on time. If we have past due commitments to the customers, they're reflected as back orders. If we have past due, uh, I'm sorry, and any firm commitments from the customers from today forward will show up as being committed. And if we have any, uh, if, if there are firm commitments that exceed the forecast, then that would um, uh, show up here as well. We're targeting this 1,498. So the net result right now for this particular item is um, we actually have uh, eight, 185 more than needed in the um, uh, of this item, so this item should not be in the replenishment plan at, at this point in time. So that's a, a very quick overview at a very detailed level to explain how the application is calculating and, and uh, building uh, the replenishment requirements. In reality, the user won't necessarily spend a lot of time uh, at this level of detail. In fact, once they are once the implement once Philogix is implemented and you're comfortable with the results. Um, you'll probably spend more time at a much higher level. So I'm going to switch now, and I'm going to view this as a day in the life of a, a, a purchasing manager. So I've just come in in the morning. I sign in to Bologics. It brings me to the home page. I can very quickly say, well, geez, what happened yesterday? We, have, we now have some customer orders driving shortages. 
I could come in here very quickly, get to some of that detail and see what's occurring. So and we, we'd already touched on this. So here I can see it's the sales order that's driving this issue. So I could perhaps, you know, give that customer a call, give that supplier a call. So I can very quickly identify um, items that require replenishment. I can also very quickly come in and perform my replenishment planning. So Velodix uses a concept called planning groups. A planning group is a set of items that have similar characteristics for replenishment planning purposes. A very common approach to setting up planning groups is by supplier. Another approach may be by uh, location. Uh, if you have a larger organization, you maybe you want to look at things by a particular product category or product class. Uh, the planning groups are very flexible. You can define them and set them up in virtually any manner you want. Today, I want to plan for this particular supplier. And I don't know if you noticed, when I clicked on that, that supplier, this pop-up uh, came up. And the reason is this supplier gives us free freight if we place an order of at least $5,000. Now, while I'm targeting uh, of the cost, you also have the ability to get visibility to weight or volume if you're trying to fill shipping containers, as well as uh, just a minimum uh, quantity, a total, I, total number of items. So you have visibility to all four of those uh, variables. I'm targeting the minimum cost, so now I'm going to go ahead and do my review. And I can immediately see a negative, a, a, a net quantity of uh, four line items for a total of $577,000. So I've clearly met my free freight um, of $5,000. Replenishment planning could be as quick and easy as clicking here, hitting approve, and that would then be ready to uh, be returned to Sage using the visual integrator task. So it's very quick. Literally within seconds, uh, you could create a purchase order. In reality, this is real money. Uh, we assume that the user may want to, uh, there may be things occurring that aren't evident in the data. Um, so we assume you may want to review this. So let's take a look at this first item on the list. Um, here it's recommending a quantity, of, a purchase quantity of 1,030. Um, it's very expensive. That's over $311,000. Some of the information we provide is here if I click on the item description, I can view the graphical view of the history and forecast and see what's occurring there. You can also get visibility to the balances that have been brought in from uh, the mass uh, database, that, you know, past due commitments, on hand quantities, on order totals. Uh, the order multiple, meaning uh, this is bought in case quantities of five, the lead time. So all of that's uh, visible right here from this screen. You can also, if you have multiple locations, this is a very powerful view. You can very quickly see your inventory balances across the network and whether you have a surplus or not here in the net, quant the net column. So here we're actually short at all locations, so there's no opportunity to do any transfers. Um, you can very quickly get back to that inventory flow we were looking at a little bit earlier. So uh, our objective on this screen is to provide the information a user might need to make an informed decision about whether they want to take action and buy this 130 or this 1,030 that uh, the application is recommending. Um, this number is live. This is live data. So you can modify this if you want to. Um, and one way to uh, determine whether you may want to modify it or not is you can take Take a look here in the uh, stocking quantity. If I click on this, this number, this is where you get visibility to the exchange curve that I talked about a little bit earlier. And here I can see this item actually says at a 91% service level. You can see that here. And the, the resulting stocking quantity from that. Um, this is an expensive item. You know, maybe I, I can't necessarily afford that. I can drag up and down this to see, um, you know, how that stocking quantity changes. If I take this way up to the end or up to the upper end of this, 99% service level, very significant impact. I'd need at least another 400 in, in stock to be able to achieve that 99% service level. So this can be a very powerful tool to help you determine whether you really do want to purchase or, or, or um, what the application is recommending. And again, this is live, so you can very quickly change these, build out your order, and go ahead and uh, uh, hit approve. <coughs> Excuse me, and that creates the purchase order within uh, Sage. Um, so I'm going to kind of switch gears again. Everything we've looked at so far has been from a very tactical perspective, how you may use the application on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. The application also provides some very powerful strategic information on the analytics tab. You click into the investment analysis. 
you get immediate visibility into the current <clears throat> inventory and what you've committed to in inventory. In this example, they've committed to $4.2 million of inventory. That includes what's sitting on the shelf as well as the value of open orders to the suppliers. Right next to that, you can see the ideal inventory based off of the logic's approach to optimizing the inventory. And then again, you can see another view. Here's the adjusted ideal, meaning after you've modified the forecast or, or uh, changed other planning parameters, what's the, um, what's the adjusted ideal inventory? So in this example, there's potential to perhaps safely reduce this inventory by over $900,000 or 20, over 20%. 20 this is not unusual to see potential savings like this, uh, or even greater when we first go live. And what the application is doing then is enabling you to, giving you visibility so you can see where there's potential to optimize the investment. Now in reality, you may never get to the ideal or the adjusted ideal inventory. And the reason is, one very valid reason is uh, filling uh, shipping containers. When you're doing that, you're purposely overbuying that's a very valid, valid business reason for doing that. But what this view into the data does, it enables you to very quickly see what those business decisions or those requirements are doing to your optimum inventory investment. So this first item on the list, it looks like it potentially reduce this investment alone for this one item by over $325,000. So this can be a very powerful tool to help you optimize your inventory. Another strategic view into the inventory is what we refer to as the forward aging. And this is not a traditional aging, providing insight as to how long you've had the item sitting on your shelf. What this is doing is looking at what is currently sitting on the shelf in the warehouse, and then looking forward a selected period of time. I've set it to look forward six months. And then it does a comparison of the current inventory, one-hand inventory. Just a $1.1 million worth of that is forecasted to be sold over the next six months. Of those same items, there's about $1.9 million worth more than needed for the next six months. That's excess. And there's a, about $400,000 worth of inventory that hasn't had any demand for at least a year. That's inactive. Again, literally within seconds, you can very quickly see um, opportunities for optimizing your investment. So I've just completed a very, very quick high-level overview of the software. Um, and uh, so you can see how it can help with both a tactical perspective as well as a strategic perspective. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of conclude the session with um, a, a discussion of where the value uh, comes from and <clears throat> areas where we see value. Um, we have numerous case studies published, and I'll be talking about one of them in just a minute. But our users, many of our users, are able to reduce their inventory by 20% within the first year. It doesn't occur overnight. It takes some time to work through that. But many of them are able to reduce their inventory by 20% within the first year. And some of them are able to exceed that. Uh, we've seen the reductions up to 40% over um, uh, a couple of year period. We also see significant reductions in the amount of time required to do inventory planning. Uh, it's many of our customers are able to reduce the amount of time by 60 to 80 percent. Um, and this may seem counterintuitive, but in, even though we enable users to reduce their inventory, we also see a significant reduction in stock out. And that's due to a better inventory mix, ensuring you have the appropriate items on hand when needed. And as a result of those reductions in stock outs, many of our users see increased sales by having you know, obviously being able to sell the items that are sitting on their shelf. So these are areas that impact. And what I'm going to do is just talk briefly about a real-life case study from Transelectric. They, uh, they provide uh, parts and uh, accessories for heavy equipment. Um, we, did, we went and talked with them three months after they went live with Vologix. And within three months, they had already reduced their inventory by 12%. The person who was doing their planning uh, was spending two full days a week before Vologix. After implementing Vologix and becoming comfortable with it, it was reduced to two hours a week. So from two full days to two hours. He almost got two full days a week back to do other value-added activities. In that short period of time, they, they recognized an increase in sales of 10% over the previous year that they attributed directly to better inventory availability. They were losing less sales due to stockouts. Their back orders, uh, the other side of that is the back orders had decreased. 
So they received a, a return on their investment in 10 to 11 weeks. It was very quick. This is not unusual. We went back and talked to them a year later. They had reduced their inventory by 20%. They still had that 10% increase in revenue they attributed to better inventory availability. They reduced their back orders by 70%. They were able to reduce, remove and eliminate 60% of their dead stock. And one thing that was a surprise to them was due to the fact that they now had a forecast that they could depend upon and their purchasing manager now had almost two additional days a week back to do other things. He was able to sit down with each of his suppliers, providing them with the forecast, committing to volume agreements for the year. On average, he was able to reduce his overall costs from the suppliers across the board by 3%. So while Scott Toll at Translectric viewed the time savings alone as worth the investment, um, the actual value, the actual money savings was uh, was the gravy. So they, this is not unusual. This is very typical of uh, results you may see. Um, so with that, what I would like to do is uh, open it up, um, Bryce, to any questions anyone may have. All right. So if anybody has a question, please uh, go ahead and type them into the chat box down below. Um, if you are interested, if you saw some things that are interested, uh, you can please just speak with uh, your, your sales rep at ISM and they'll be happy to set up a, a more detailed demonstration so that we can um, you know, answer any questions you may have, talk about your specific uh, business requirements. Oh, great question. Um, we have a manufacturing portion of the company, so can this be synced with the raw goods required for X quantity of finished goods? forecast to sell, and the answer to that is absolutely. Um, we, uh, we do provide, uh, we do uh, have uh, production planning, and um, I actually didn't have that open. Let me just see if I can find it real quick, since we're just a few minutes early here. Um, and I can actually touch on that if you would like. But yes, the answer to that is we absolutely can look at uh, both the demand from uh, finished goods as well as um, demand from um, production items. And we actually provide a significant amount of detail with that. So what I've done, I've just gone into the planning tool and I've pulled up an item here. This is a sub-assembly. So this item is, it has its own bill of material and it's also used in other bills of materials. And here you can actually see this item's bill of material, so what it consists of and quantity per. And you can also see where this item is used. It's used in two parent bills of materials. This item, as being a sub-assembly, is actually sold as is, but it's also used in the production process. And we capture all of that. So if I drill into this history here, you can actually see where that demand's coming from. Here's the demand from selling it directly. So th these are uh, direct sales of the item. Here's the dependent demand down here. This is the demand of this item being used in the production process. And um, we're planned for the total. So yes, to uh, long question, long answer to your question, yeah, we do capture that. And um, we plan accordingly. And we also do the same thing with the forecast. You can plan for this item or this sub-assembly directly. You can forecast for it directly. Or if the parent, if the forecast for the parent was modified or, or, or um, the forecast for the parents are built in here as well. So you get 